here and I'm here to tell you all about how to mold and cast your own custom gemstones out of clear resin. If you're lucky, you'll be able to find the molding and casting supplies you need at your local craft store. If you're not, you can still find resin and casting materials at online art stores like dicklick.com or at industrial supply stores like Tap Plastics. Just Google the words resin casting and you should come up with a long list of suppliers. Custom molding your own gemstones is usually something you'll have to resort to if the gems you want to make are in unusual shape an unusual color or unusually large. The easiest way to cast a gem is to use a commercially produced mold made specifically for resin casting. Fortunately, there are many different kinds of molds available, ranging from the very small to the very large, in a wide variety of shapes. Some of these you can find in brick and mortar craft stores, and some of these you'll have to hunt for in casting supply stores online. If you want to create round gemstones, you can make an impromptu gem mold using a plastic paint palette, like the ones you see here. These are available in most craft stores. All you have to do is fill a little dents in with your resin, and when it hardens, you can just pop the finished gems right out. I would not recommend using soap molds or silicone molds for gem casting, as they're often not very compatible with resin. I would also not recommend using silicone RTV as a casting agent for custom molds, since silicone can either create gems that are sticky or gems that have a dull coating on them, depending on the type of resin used. Custom making your own gems. To do this, you'll have to custom make your own molds. One way you can do this is by creating a simple mold out of modeling clay. I generally don't like using this method to make a mold, since the clay tends to stick to the finished gemstone, even if a mold release agent is used. When your gem hardens, you have to scrape all the clay off of it, polish it, and then coat it with a clear resin spray. Getting a perfect impression with the clay can also be a trying business. You have to take care not to get your fingerprints in the walls of the mold, and you have to make your mold deep enough to hold the resin once it's been poured. Don't be surprised if you have to remake your mold repeatedly to get a good result. Making a mold for a faceted gemstone. A faceted gem is one that has several sides to it. This is a project that takes a bit more advanced skill, so if you're not really interested in making complex molds, then feel free to skip the rest of this video and click on the Resin Gem Making Part 2 video. Creating a custom faceted gem mold involves creating an object around which you will form your mold. This original object can be made of anything, although I generally like to make mine out of craft foam coated with tagboard or styrene plastic on all sides. If you can master building an object like this, then you should pretty much be able to master building the mold that will be based on this object. Your original object should look more or less exactly like the transparent gem that you want to make, although it should be a little bit thicker than what you intend that gem to be. For my emerald cut gemstone here, I began by taking a large scrap of tag board and carefully tracing the top facet of the gemstone onto the center of it. Precision was key here. Once I had created the top facet, I started making the tabs that would make up the sides of the gemstone. I carefully began cutting out the little wedges of space between each tab before folding them up. I pressed the mold, as it was now, down over my original object to compare its shape. I then started taping the tabs together until I had come up with a concave bowl that my resin could be poured into. Before pouring could occur, I hot glued the bottom of the mold to a reinforcing piece of tag board that would serve as the base of the mold, keeping it from tipping over. With that done, now would come the most important part of the process coating the inside of the mold with cellophane tape to keep the resin from sticking to it. This is also the hardest part of the process as it involves having to cover each individual facet of the mold with a custom shaped piece of tape. I'm using tape with printing on it so you can see it better. You may be wondering why I didn't just coat all the tag board with cellophane tape before I started cutting it and folding the tabs. 
That's because cellophane tape wrinkles when bent, and that would have left a ring of unsightly wrinkles around the top of the gem where the tabs were folded. The last piece of tape to put in place was the one that covered the floor of the mold. I had to make sure that all of the surface area within the mold was covered, otherwise the resin would stick to it. The last step in the mold making process involved squeezing a layer of hot glue around the base of the mold to keep any resin from leaking out. I also used hot glue to reinforce the wall seams of the mold. All I had to do now was place the mold in a disposable container, in case the mold leaked I didn't want the resin getting all over the place, and then pouring could begin.